Hey guys, what is up? My name is Ashley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to take you through one of my leg days. My leg days right now are pretty hypertrophy focused along with all of my days, honestly. For a while I was going through a phase where I was really focused on strength and moving more weight. Right now I've kind of taken a step away from that and I'm more focused on the hypertrophy aspect of everything. I used to do back squats every single leg day. Now I've stepped away from that. I am now doing pendulum squats, which I absolutely love. So that was my first movement for this day. These are honestly very humbling. Some hack squats I can do like two plates on each side or even three. And then some hack squats I can only do like one on each side. It kind of depends on the machine itself. But hack squats, like press, I'm typically way stronger. These pendulum squats are so hard. I think when I first started doing them, I was doing them with a 25 pound plate. Some of it was just getting used to it. Now I've worked my way up to three 25 pound plates. So I mean, it's 75 pounds. I don't know how much the actual squat weighs itself. I do it with three 25s for my top set. And I think I got it for like four or five. And so then I dropped it down to two 25 pound plates, which is kind of a, it's a good amount of weight. I get like eight to 10 reps. I might get a little bit less after that top set. I don't remember how many I get, but either way, a very humbling machine. I really like it though, because it's one of the only machines that I'm able to get full range of motion on, full astrograss because of the way it goes down. My, like my hamstrings are totally resting on my calves. So I'm getting a huge stretch in my quads, which is what I want for me with my proportions and my inability to squat to depth. Well, not to depth, I can squat to depth. My inability to squat, you know, astrograss is, I feel like that's the only good way to put it, honestly. <laughs> Since I can't squat all the way down and get that full stretch in my quads, back squats for me are not the most beneficial for a hypertrophy sense for my quads. They are still great movement, but this is gonna get more stretch. I'm gonna get a little bit more out of it for my quads. I've been liking these a lot. They are very hard. I'm really working on pushing myself to failure, which you'll see. So I did the first set with 325s. Didn't fail that one because Ethan helped me. And then I did two sets that have 225s and a 10 on it. And then my last set, I dropped the 10. And all three of those last sets, I went to failure. I do set it up safely first. <laughs> so I, I do a warm up with no weight on it and I go all the way down and make sure that I can comfortably like fail it and totally rest it down on the bottom. And I do that because I know I'm gonna go till failure. I'm going till failure because I feel like I don't necessarily trust my judgment to say, oh, I have one rep left. Cause if you go within one rep of failure, that's totally fine too. However, it actually needs to be one rep within failure. And a lot of the times I think I'm about to fail and then I get like three more out. So for me and like my ability to gauge how hard I'm pushing, I just go till failure because it's, I'm doing it safely. So I, why not? I might as well get all of the benefits <laughs> from the exercise that I can. Especially where I'm cutting right now, I'm trying to focus really hard on bringing the intensity because I don't want to lose muscle. I don't want to lose strength. I'm trying to keep that going as much as I can. That's also why I did a top set that was a little bit heavier, not in the usual rep range, but I just want to keep the numbers there. I don't want to get in the habit of going light on things and not actually progressing. Progressive overload is super important, as I've mentioned so many times, and it can be harder when you're a little bit more advanced or if you're, say, in a cut. So I'm just trying to push myself as much as I can. Top sets are probably gonna be something I work with, even if it's a little bit lower on the rep range. The rest of my sets will be higher, so it'll make up for it. But that way I'm just keeping that weight there, getting my muscles used to being under heavier load. And then I'll still probably progress on it, even though I'm in a cut, I'm not just gonna totally flatline all of my progression. So maybe next time I'll get that top set for like six, or I'll get it for the same amount, but then the other sets afterwards, I'll get it for like another rep or two. But yeah, if you guys have one of these squats in your gym, you really should try it. It will murder your legs. Sometimes I don't even do like extensions after doing this machine because my quads are just so dead. Like I honestly get a better stretch doing this, I think, than I do like extensions, which is crazy, but it's really good. All together, I did four sets of the pendulum squats. Brutal. <laughs> then I did not record it because there wasn't a good spot to put the tripod and cameraman was not with me. I will try to record it next time, but it's the same thing I used to do. Um, like back extensions, I think they're called technically. It's when your legs and your hips are all on a pad. I'll put a picture of the pad in so you know what I'm talking about. And you hinge at the hips and you hold the dumbbell 
like right here and then you just lift up and it's working my glutes well this specific gym has a machine set up for this so you actually just hold a bar that's connected to a cable and a weight stack and you just adjust the weight i don't get quite as big of a stretch because there's like always slack there's always like a little bit of slack in the cable you know what i mean so at the bottom the weight is like resting before i'm actually at the bottom of the stretch but to counteract that i kind of just like bend my arms and hold the bar up a little further it works my forearms a little bit but it's not the end of the world it's fine it's very handy to not have to like carry a dumbbell across the gym so i kind of like having this machine and it literally kills your glutes i don't know if it's easier to go to failure because it's a machine or something or maybe it's easier to hold more weight the way it's set up as opposed to trying to hold a dumbbell in my chest but my glutes have been so sore after doing this i just like awkwardly pace around after doing this exercise because like i don't know what to do with myself because it hurts but there's no spot to sit i can't even sit because my glutes hurt but i'm just like ah don't know what to do mm. this coffee's cold i think i did three sets of that for my glutes because the pendulum squats kind of work my glutes but it's more a quad focused exercise especially the way i'm doing them i'm doing them with like a narrow stance i do feel it in my glutes but i just don't think it's hitting them quite enough so i did three sets of this i'm gonna try to start incorporating maybe some more glute movements because i want my glutes to grow but then i I don't do a super glute focused workout most of the time. I feel like they get kind of pushed aside because I focus so much on quads and hamstrings. And I'm like, oh, my glutes are getting hit too, but I need to set aside specific like isolation movements for my glutes a little bit more. I want the results, but I'm not doing anything for them. So leg extensions. These are literally so brutal after doing the pendulum squats. Again, I'm really focusing on bringing the intensity and going till failure. I feel like I say this all the time. Almost every workout, I feel like I push myself a little bit harder than I thought I could the last time, which has been very rewarding. I'm feeling really good after my workouts. I'm also feeling very sore after my workouts. Part of this is definitely because I'm cutting. I'm not recovering quite as well. However, it's balanced out because I work. I work 12 hour shifts if you're new here. If you're not, you've heard me say this and complain about it a million times. I'm a nurse, I work in the hospital. I don't get to work out on the days I work. Technically, I could on some days because my gym during the week is open until 11. However, I've tried working out after my shifts and it's just not a super good workout. I'm tired, my body's tired. I'm normally starving when I get off work, so I need to go home and eat. And I don't wanna work out right after I eat, but I don't wanna work out starving. It so it just doesn't work out the best. And if I work the next day, it's hard because I don't get out of work till about eight o'clock. So by the time I got home, dressed back to the gym, it'd be like nine at least. And then I wouldn't be home ready to go to bed till at least 11, probably more like midnight by the time I eat and get everything ready for the next day. And then I have to get up at five. So it's really not optimal. Like I said, if I needed to, I could. I used to do it when I was in school, like before my clinicals, I worked out on 12 hour days, but it's just, I don't think it's as beneficial as I thought it was. I thought it was more beneficial to get that workout in, but I think my body might just benefit from the rest a little bit more and then going harder on the days I have more time. Part of it might just be because I'm lazy too, but. <laughs> I think, I think it's pretty accurate. I don't think the workouts would be super beneficial. I definitely would not be going as hard as I am right now on my days off. But anyways, not working out three days a week. Yeah, three rest days every week pretty much is what it ends up being, is balancing out the fact that I'm not recovering the best. I'm not like, I'm a little bit more sore than I used to be. And I'm more sore for a few days. Like technically, I'm having to record this late because I recorded my leg day. It was like five o'clock at night. And then I worked the next day. So yeah, this was like two days ago I recorded this leg day and I'm still sore. That's okay though, it's not a bad thing. I like being sore, I'm not complaining, but I'm noticing that I'm more sore than I was during my bulk and I'm doing the absolute best I can to drink water. I'm peeing around the clock. I just know that water is super important for your recovery and for your muscles and I should focus on it when I'm bulking too, but I'm paying more attention to it now that I'm cutting because where I don't have all the energy and nutrients for my muscles, I'm trying to make sure everything else is in line because I want to retain as much muscle as I can during this cut. So my water intake is through the roof right now. Ooh, more news. <laughs> I know my last video about cardio, I kind of crapped on people who ride bikes. Half of it was a joke, half of it wasn't. I bought a bike. However, I'm not riding it in the car lanes. I'm riding it on a bike path around where I live. And it's very fun. My butt is very sore. I need to get a more comfortable seat on it. But I have now done cardio two times. 
so I'm pretty proud of myself. Both times we biked about nine miles. Honestly, I have no idea like how many calories that is or anything. I'm not really tracking that because honestly, the bike riding is for fun. I do like that it's burning the calories, but it's just something to do. I'm not specifically doing it to make myself do cardio or anything. Um, my Apple Watch says that I burn like yesterday outdoor cycle, one hour, 9.08 miles, active calories, 281, average heart rate, 147, average speed for the first half was 8.3 miles an hour. That is because we were going uphill on the way out. Average speed on the way back was 10.1 because it was more downhill. I probably burned around 200 calories. I feel like that's accurate, two to 300, because it was like moderate intensity. That's the word I was going for. And if you look it up, I think that's what it says. This is an hour of biking is around like two to 300 calories if you're going an easy to moderate pace. And I don't want to overjudge and say, oh, I was going moderate to hard and burned 600 calories. I'd rather undershoot a little bit. So probably like 200. I'm not really like adding in anything though, as far as food goes to make up for those, I would rather just take the extra fat loss that I'm gonna get over the course of four weeks. And maybe I'll start doing cardio more often, but either way, it's going to be to just benefit my cut. It's not gonna be so I can eat a little bit more. Otherwise, I would just not do the cardio. No, I'm just kidding. Do your cardio, there's other benefits besides just weight loss. Watch my last video, or my two videos ago. I talk all about it. I didn't record this either because I forgot, but I did do calves. I have been doing pretty well with doing calves. I realized like a couple weeks ago, I was like, I really don't like my calves. I always complain about them. Whenever I see my legs, I'm like, oh, I wish I had big calves, but then I'm not, I wasn't doing calves. So like, duh, I'm starting to do calves now. It's easy for me if I just superset them because I have a hard time dedicating 20 minutes to just doing calves. So it's probably not as beneficial because I'm tired after my set, but it's better than nothing. I superset my leg extensions with calves and then I also superset my hamstring curls with calves because the calf machine is right beside the quad or the leg extension and right beside the hamstring curl. So it works out perfect. I can just switch back and forth very easily. These leg extensions, I did two regular sets, not super heavy. I think I did like around 10 reps and then I did a drop set for my last set. It literally killed me. I think you can see me in the video. I'm just like shaking my legs at the end and it's because they hurt so bad. I like don't know what to do with them because after doing the pendulum squats and doing the leg extensions are just literally brutal. It's so hard. I think honestly they get and I could get away with just doing the pendulum squats, but for my own sake and because I like doing them and I want to get the sets in, I'm doing the leg extensions, but I would probably be sore without them. <laughs> these hamstring curls, I feel like when I do these, there's something about the top. I'm not getting, it feels like the top of the movement is not done by my hamstrings, if that makes sense. I feel like the top of the movement, I don't feel the first like couple inches of movement until down here, but I want to feel that because that's the stretch position, which is, this is supposed to be my leg and this is, like this is my thigh and this is my lower leg, shins, calves, whatever. I feel like, like it's stretched here, which is where it's important, but then I don't actually feel it in my hamstrings until like right here. Like here to here is like, I don't even know if, I don't know if it's my calves that I'm like using or if I'm somehow like pushing my weight so I'm not doing it correctly, but I've been trying to focus on it because I really want that last stretch part, but I just don't feel it. So if you guys have any tips for that, please let me know in the comments. I don't know if it's the machine, if I'm doing something weird, or maybe I just can't feel it, but it's still getting stretched and working the muscle in that position. I'm really not sure. My hamstrings like can't engage until they're a little bit bent. Maybe that's just normal and I didn't notice it until now. I totally forgot. I did two sets of RDLs on the Smith machine. I was literally about to say that I need to start doing more hamstring movements. I forgot that I did these. I don't necessarily love doing RDLs on the Smith machine. It's kind of difficult to get your feet in the right spot. I feel like I have to put my feet way forward and, and like almost like pull on the bar to keep me balanced upright. Because otherwise, if you don't put your feet forward, when you actually hinge over, the bar is so far away from your legs. And with the Smith machine, the safeties, you can't take them off. So they're always at the bottom if you don't need them. So the bar can't go all the way down. So I have to stand on a plate, which is not the end of the world. But the reason I'm doing it on the Smith machine is because one, it's a little bit faster <laughs> to set up. Two, the bigger reason is because my back, that back injury that I got back when I did a back squat with 135, doing literally a warm up, I pulled something in my lower back. 
it's healed most of the way but the other day i was doing rdls and i kind of messed up because i did like five reps with 135 and then normally 185 is the warm-up as well but instead i took 185 to like almost failure as like a working set so i was not adequately warmed up but i like re-pulled it a little bit so i've been very hesitant with the rdls so i feel like using the smith machine allows for a little bit more stability and i'm less likely to pull that in my back again so that's why i've been doing it on the smith machine and i just feel like i can isolate a little bit better i can go to failure safer and i just get a better stretch which i'm going for hypertrophy right now so that's what i care about also i know if i rdl with a barbell i will ego lift and put too much weight on so this kind of holds me back from the ego lifting and the injuries and all of that and it feels pretty good so i've been i added those in because the one thing the pendulum squat does not really work is i never ever feel my hamstrings obviously like they're being worked a little bit because it's still a compound movement and your hamstrings are your brakes pretty much they're not getting hit enough from that so i added in these rdls and then hamstring curls obviously at the end i did three sets of these i think that on my last set i did a drop set i don't show it so i did two regular sets and then on my last set, I did a drop set just like I do on the leg extensions. I think I dropped it. I had it at like 105 and then I probably drop it down to 70 so I can burn out and get like six more reps ish is probably about what I'm doing. And I feel like it just gives you a little bit extra, a little bit extra pump. You're going a little bit more past your failure. So I like doing that. I was doing that on every single set of my leg extensions back when I was at the other gym and almost crying after every single set. I haven't been doing that for my leg curls or my leg extensions recently i've been hitting them adequately in other areas but i might start doing that for my hamstrings where my compound is not hamstring focused even though i'm doing the rdls i think they could still use a little bit more work especially because it's, i don't know for me it's very easy to not think about my hamstrings because i don't see them ever first of all i'm not lean enough to see them but second of all they're behind me so i just never i don't know i never see them but i definitely need to work on them i'm so focused on my quads and my glutes because i qu my quads i see all the time and then i want a bigger butt i want a shelf butt so yeah i definitely need to work on the hamstrings though because otherwise i'm just gonna look goofy with you know muscle growth in my quads and my butt and then no hamstrings <laughs> oh as far as the cut goes i think i should give you guys a little update so as of let me look because like i said this is like two days later that i'm actually talking to you guys because i had to work the next day and i recorded late so i didn't really have time to edit the day this workout was filmed i was 175.4 and this is in the morning tmi i go pee and that's it so i don't eat i don't drink i just wake up pee and i weigh myself so it's the most accurate i think to compare every single day so that was 175.4 today I'm actually 174.8 when I woke up this morning. Weight is definitely going down. Today could be a little bit of a low fluctuation, but I think I was pretty hydrated yesterday, honestly. So I, I think the trend is going down. I have a whole little weight tracker in my phone. I just have, it's just a note and I put the date and then I put the weight every single day. Today is officially the two week mark of my cut. I'm gonna put this under cut day, not two weeks, the day it was filmed because I feel like that's the most accurate, like you're seeing me on this day for the most part. So I'm gonna put that under that day of the cut. But today is actually my 14th day. I'm pretty happy with the cut. I'm doing okay, I'm not struggling, honestly. Night times are the hardest for me. I save most of my carbs and calories for the night. So my, <laughs> my breakfast right now is fish. It sounds gross, but I struggle to eat like chewy meats, especially if I'm eating it by itself. Not even chewy, just regular meat like chicken. It's, it tastes fine, but when it's hard to chew, it just takes me so long. And then I get so grossed out after I've been eating it for like 20 minutes. So fish has been a really good go-to for me because one, it's fast and easy. Two, it's cheap. And three, it's soft. And four, it's lean. So I've been eating fish for breakfast. I've been eating fish for a snack, turkey for lunch, and then sometimes more fish for dinner. It kind of depends. Sometimes I do shrimp for dinner. Sometimes I do more turkey for dinner. I think today we have chicken breast that we're gonna grill. So I might have that, but a lot of fish. I don't know if you guys would be interested in like a little what I eat in a day right now on my cut. It wouldn't be very aesthetic <laughs> because I eat a lot of fish and it's kind of gross. Cameraman hates it because our kitchen just permanently smells like fish right now, but he can deal with it. I'm actually gonna try, I was watching TikToks this morning when I ate my lovely fish, fish in a bowl. I was watching TikToks and I saw someone make fluffy yogurt and it's like yogurt protein powder well, Greek yogurt protein powder 
baking soda, pudding mix, and it looked really good. So I think I'm gonna try that because the, the pudding mix is sugar-free. You get Greek yogurt that's fat-free, so it's pretty much almost all protein, not quite. It's like 90 calories and 18 grams of protein. And then protein powder, pretty high protein meal. I might do it as like a dessert-ish snack meal in the evening to take away one of my fish meals. <laughs> I'm gonna try that, so maybe I could film that too. But if you guys would be interested in like a what I eat in a day right now, I could try doing that at some point. You guys might disagree with me, but I'm gonna lower my calories, I think. I am doing okay with these calories right now. I'm not really noticing any issues with strength yet. I had one kind of bad bench day, not even bad. The other day I failed 135 on bench, which is not a shocker at all because one, the last time I hit 135 on bench, I had the really bad form with my elbows flared and I haven't hit it since, since fixing my form. So the other day I hit 125 and then I went right for 135 and I failed it, but I got 125 pretty easily. So I don't think I'm really noticing any issues with strength yet. Not that I want to, but I feel like that definitely means I have some room to go lower and I would rather go a little bit harder for the next say like four weeks than just keep doing this for like eight weeks because it's summer and I wanna get lean and I wanna get back to just a maintenance. I'd rather just kind of do it faster, if I'm being honest. I would rather just suck it up for a couple weeks and suffer a little bit and then go back to normal. So I might drop my calories down to like 15, 1600, somewhere in there. I'm gonna be getting 180 grams of protein. There's some fat in the fish I'm eating, so I'm really not gonna have to add any fat. And then whatever is left over is just gonna be carbs. I am gonna, oh, I think I was saying this, but I just got distracted. I save most of my carbs for the night anyways. I eat just fish for breakfast. My lunches with the turkey have had like a half serving of rice, like 100 calories worth in it with Greek yogurt instead of sour cream and some lettuce. I don't, I might cut out that rice for now and save it for later. My fish snack, <laughs> that sounds so funny to say, but my fish snack also has no rice, it's just fish. So the only carbs I'm really having during the day are in my lunch, the little bit that goes with my turkey. And then on my days off, I've been drinking like a, a Gator Light to get some electrolytes and has like 50 calories, probably all from sugar. Besides that, I'm saving everything for the nighttime. <laughs> I have been eating ramen, not gonna keep doing that. It was just really good. And we were going through a phase where we we're like watching movies, so it was fun to have like a tasty snack. But I'll probably switch over to like rice or oatmeal. I'll have like, I think I planned it all out. Well, after I eat all of my like fish, the fish has some fat in it. But after I eat all of that during the day, everything I just listed, I should have about 500 calories left over for like carbs and maybe a little bit more fats if I want in the evening. So I could do like peanut butter with some oatmeal or I could do like some, a couple servings of rice with butter. I'm probably gonna do the oatmeal, honestly. Oatmeal sounds good with a little bit of peanut butter on top or something. I do much better saving my carbs for the end of the day because when I'm, when I'm like moving around and doing stuff during the day, I'm not focused on eating. But then the second I sit on the couch and I like watch some TV to kind of mellow down before bed. All I can think about is eating sweets and tr sweets and treats, sweet treats, carbs, anything like that. I'm like, oh my God, I want all of it. That's kind of how I do it. It's not necessarily the most beneficial because I'm not the most like carved up before my workout. It's what works for me. You gotta do what works for you. Also something, I think I mentioned this last time, but I have something new to add on. I've been buying Jello cups, the sugar-free cherry Jello cups. And those have been super helpful in kind of like satisfying my, my sweet tooth. However, I recently bought, I bought like the actual packets of Jello that you can make yourself. And they have a sugar-free raspberry flavor. And it's literally so good. The, I think the box makes eight half cup servings. They're like five calories each. So it's negligible. And I literally ate the whole thing yesterday. So I ate eight servings of Jello yesterday. It's probably gonna come back and bite me in the butt because there's a bunch of like artificial sweeteners and definitely not the best for my digestive system, but it's helping me with this cut right now, so that's okay. But yeah, the plan is to drop my calories a little bit more. So in the next few videos, if I'm complaining about cutting and being hungry, don't be surprised, but we should see some decent progress. I did take progress pictures. I think it was like technically the third day of my cut. So I might have had a little bit of water weight off. Not yet, because I don't look that much different. Maybe in like two weeks, I'll do a little progress pick up. I just almost tipped my chair. I'll do a little progress picture update and we can laugh at how fat I was at the beginning of this bolt, uh, at the beginning of this cut. 
<laughs> I don't want to show them yet because I'll be like, I don't look that different and it's just going to make me insecure. But once I look a lot better, then we can compare, look back and make fun of me. We're getting there. We're getting there. My stomach is definitely a little bit leaner. I feel like I can see it a little bit in my legs, like the side, the side of my leg where you see the quad and the hamstring come together. I feel like you can kind of see it over on that in, you'll see it in the posing. You probably already saw it. You can kind of see a line there, which is new. And then my back probably is a little bit leaner, but we definitely have a lot of work to do still. I'm hoping, I don't know if you can really tell yet, whenever I bulk and cut, I definitely gained some weight in my face. So I'm hoping that my face loses weight too, because watching back a couple videos ago, <laughs> when I was editing the video, I saw my face and I was like, oh, oh good thing I'm cutting. I was like, it's time. Once my face starts to get chubby, that's always when it's time to start cutting. It's like the last thing to gain weight too. So that's like my, my little red flag that the bulk has gone too far. Yeah, this leg day was literally killer. I am still sore. I tried to ride my bike yesterday and my quads were on fire the whole way. I thought they were gonna cramp up. You guys should seriously try the pendulum squat if you have one. I promise it'll be worth it. It might take a couple of tries to get used to it, but it is killer. You should really do it. But that is everything for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget code ASH20 at psychopharma.com if you want to get pre-workout, pump covers, all that. I know I say it every time, but I want you guys to save your money. Please let me know if you use it. I appreciate it so much. But don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know if you want to see like a what I eat in a day. I will make it as realistic as can be. It'll be very transparent and probably a little disgusting, but maybe interesting. So let me know if you want to see that. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.